Welcome to COEX 3D. So we're located in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and uh, we love having visitors. So if you're local to us, not too far away, please feel free to stop in. But those who aren't from around here, we thought we'd take a little video and show you COEX 3D. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through our manufacturing plant, show you how we make the filament, and how we do what we do. Next, we're gonna show you the finished goods that we have, and then we'll end by showing you our showroom as well as our 3D print center. So let's take a walk around. All right, so now we're out here at the start of the manufacturing floor, and we'll show you the whole process. We're gonna show you how this turns into this. A lot of people just take filament for granted. They use it every single day, but they have no idea the amount of work, effort, and time that it takes to make this. We're gonna show you the whole process. What I'm standing in front of is what we call a Gaylord of plastic. This is a great big huge bin, starts about 1,700 pounds, and this is what raw plastic looks like. In this case, what I'm holding in my hand here is our TPE, one of the uh, flexible product lines that we have. But all, pro all raw plastic pretty much starts the same way where it comes to us in pellet form. And we're going to melt this down, we're going to add colorant to it, and we're going to make this. So the process starts here. These machines are actually filament dryers. Or excuse me, these machines are resin dryers. The material I just showed you in my hand before is what we refer to as the plastic resin as our raw material. We always want to make sure that we're using the best quality and we're taking care of it in the right way possible. So these are dryers. That material gets loaded into these dryers and before we even do anything to produce the filament, we run them through these dryers for about four or five hours to make sure that our materials are in good shape. From there, that material is going to be fed into the extrusion machine. So this is an extrusion machine um, that has one big ball topper. The primary raw material would be housed in here. In the secondary hopper is where we feed in the colorant. Colorant looks very similar to the plastic pellet. Here's a black colorant. You can see that that is a solid material that's been chipped down, highly concentrated. We only need to add about 2% of that to the raw material in order to make a perfectly black stone. So sometimes people ask, when I print, does color make a difference? Well, it really shouldn't because about 98% of your material is the raw material, whether it be PLA, PTG, TPE, and only about two to maybe up to 4% is actually the color. But that gets fed in with a separate unit, and it gets fed in in a gravimetric system. So this has a very, very sensitive scale on it, and that's how we know that we're giving exactly 2% or 3% or whatever that color formula happens to be. It weighs the material as it's passing through, and with a very small screw auger, it's gonna add that color in at the correct rate. So here's what the extrusion machine looks like once you get past the hopper that's feeding in. How this thing works is it's got one great big long screw that turns. As this material is fed in, it's going to hit the right temperature inside that barrel. There's three zones that are inside this. In the simplest terms, there's a melting zone, there's a mixing zone, and a pushing zone. So in the first stage, the material melts. It all melts together. That's the raw material as well as the coloring. In the middle section, it's mixing it. We need to make sure that not only the color is mixed in, but that the entire thing is blended to the point where you don't have any streaky colors in your finished filament. Finally, the pushing zone. The last part of that screw is designed that it's going to build up a really high level of back pressure, and it's going to push it out through the end of the extruder. So if you walk in down here and take a look at the hot end of this, there's multiple dyes in here, and it's shooting out a filament that's about six millimeters in diameter. Now we're making right now a 1.75 millimeter. What we're gonna see here is that that filament is actually gonna be drawn and stretched to the right side. 
the, the filament extrudes into a bath where the, uh, the material can cool down slowly, but not so slowly that we don't have time to dry. The faster that you pull it is gonna determine how thin that line is. Once you get it to just the right size, because remember we're making 1.75, we need to lock in and hold that diameter so that the entire roll is a consistent diameter. Now we're gonna walk down and I'll show you where we pull it from. All right, so this mechanism right here is what we call the puller. This is a device that has two belts that are rolling together and it's pinching the filament. And it's got about this much distance that it's drawing that filament in a straight line. It's passing through a device here that is called a zoom box, and that's how we measure the filament. We need to measure it pretty much all the time as it's continually flowing through. Now I said before in this video we were making a 1.75 millimeter. I misspoke. It turns out right now we're making a 2.85. That's actually a good mistake for me to make because it proves the point. We can use the same set of dies to make 2.85 millimeter as we can 1.75. We just adjust the pushing speed of the extruder and the pulling speed of the puller, and that's how we draw it to the right size. That PLA runs at about 220 to 230 feet per minute. This 60A runs slower, you have to be more careful with it, but the 1.75 runs at about 180 feet per minute. We output on the display what's being sent by the zoom box, and we give ourselves a tolerance with 1.75 millimeter filament, um, plus or minus only 0 0.03 millimeters. That's how tight we keep that tolerance so that it runs through your printer fine. 2.85, the window is a little bit bigger, but we hold to a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.05 millimeters on the 285. As it passes through, we're then direct spooling it right onto the spool. That spool would be able to go from here right onto a 3D printer. But we do one final quality check to make sure that that filament is ready to use. And I can show you that over here. This cart would represent what we did in this production ship. So we're closing in on the end of the day. You can see that it's almost full. But all of these spools were freshly made today. And we're going to put them into our dryer before we package them. These are going to be dried uh, for about six hours. So we'll run that dryer overnight. And then when this shift comes back tomorrow morning, then their material that they made today is going to be ready for packaging. That dryer is not much to look at, but this big silver box. So if you have a filament dryer in your shop um, that you're using, it's probably small, it's probably about this big. That's great for two or three spools. Clearly we can't do that. So we have a great big oven. I can show you what it looks like on the inside. It is truly just a big box with heating elements. There is ventilation in there. And that whole cart will fit snugly right in there. It's all sealed up. And we will dry that. We will dry that at the appropriate temperatures for the appropriate amount of time so that it can go from there to pack. Now you've seen how we make the product, now you've seen how we dry it, how we package it. This is our finished goods area. So we maintain a lot of inventory. We're very proud of the fact that most of our orders will ship the same day the order comes in. If we get the order before noon, it's gonna ship out the same day. The way we can do that is by having a lot of finished goods on the shelf. So we have inventory of one kilogram spools, 500 gram spools, five pound spools, nine pound spools, even 15 and 22 pound spools. We don't have that on every single SKU, but we do know what our customers are going through, so we keep the appropriate amount of quantity on hand. 
and just take a look around here, row after row of boxes of filament, all different colors, all different types, everything that we make we do keep on hand so they can ship out right away. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour. I hope it makes a little more sense now to see how filament is made. Um, that's the shop. That's how we make it. That's how we store it. That's how we get it out to our customers. From here, we're going to go into the showroom, give you a look at the colorful side of our business. So here's our showroom. This is where we welcome customers to come in, take a look around, talk to us about materials, figure out what they need. We're also happy to do that online. You can always email us at support at coex3d and we'll definitely reply to whatever questions you might have. One thing that people always love to see when they come in here is inside this room. This is a new uh, a 3D printed door knocker. <laughs> come on in! This is our print center. And in here, we're continuing to grow this out. We moved into this building in March of 2023. Prior to this, we really didn't have any space for a print center. So this is a big deal for us. See, we've got a lot of printers. This is the biggest one that we have. This is the Modix Big 60. It's a 600 by 600 by 600 build area. So that's it. Remember, I said we're in Green Bay, so we're in Packer Country. I'm going to hold up my Lombardi trophy. Thanks so much for coming by for the virtual tour of Coex 3D. We'd love to do business with you.